Hello, uh, my name is Mike Keglovitz, and I am the ABLE and Special Programs Manager for Col uh, Colorado ABLE. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, Colorado ABLE and what, what are the benefits and drawbacks and, and maybe uh, how people are going to use uh, these types of accounts. <clears throat> so first off, um, it's named after Stephen Beck Jr. Achieving a Better Life exper Experience, and it was passed under Obama in 2014. And then each state had to go through legislation to also uh, adopt it in, into their um, state legislature. Um, the really big thing about um, ABLE, ABLE accounts is that it eliminates the $2,000 um, cap for, for SSI and SSDI. Um, Historically, either you had to have a spend down where um, if they were um, butting up against that $2,000 limit, they would have to uh, buy TVs or, or uh, spend it down so that they could stay eligible for SSI or for, for Medicaid. Um, so this account uh, helps to eliminate that issue where, where people, friends, family can put money into that um, and uh, folks don't lose their, their federal benefits. The other key aspect, um, and the reason that College Invest is kind of administering it, College Invest is the, the, the state of Colorado. We administer the, the college savings plans for the state of Colorado. Um, and because ABLE accounts have the same taxation, they've, they've paired it um, uh, with us so that we would administer this, this program. So the, the key aspect is that the money that, goes, that grows in there, it grows tax deferred. And then you have tax-free access for that money uh, as long as it's used for qualified uh, expenses. And, and we will talk a little bit more about that in, in a few minutes. <clears throat> the other aspect is there, were, there are other states that, that have launched prior to Colorado. And some of you may have opened up uh, accounts in other states. And that's fine. You are totally able to, to go to other states and open and participate in their programs. But you can only have one account per beneficiary. You can roll that, uh, you know, if you wanted the Colorado plan, you could roll that in. Um, but you can't have one here um, and then one in, in uh, uh, Utah or, you know, in a different state. So one per one uh, beneficiary. <clears throat> All right, so who is eligible for ABLE accounts? Um, first off, if, if you are collecting, if you are um, SSI or SSDI, um, uh, you automatically qualify for an ABLE account. If you uh, do not qualify, if you're not collecting or, or receiving income from those, you, you can still qualify for it. You just need to go through a self-certification process. And that doesn't mean that you need to supply that um, to Colorado ABLE to open it up. Um, you, you need to go to your doctor and um, identify that the onset of disability occurred before age 26. Um, if it occurred at age 30, uh, unfortunately, you, you don't qualify for an ABLE. But as long as the, the diagnosis of the disability happened before age 26, you're eligible, eligible and you can go through a self-certification process, um, which would be under the laws of the Social Security Administration and their definition of a disability. You would get a doctor um, certification and you would keep that on file for yourself. Um, and uh, you, you don't need to supply that to, uh, to Colorado ABLE. And we would actually prefer if you didn't send that in just with, um, with uh, um, some of the health issues uh, uh, with that. So, so a couple of different things. One, somebody can open up an account on their own. If, if they are uh, mentally competent, they can open up an uh, enable account and establish it. If somebody is either a minor or they're, they're incompetent um, in terms of opening it, opening up the account, um, the account must, must be a person with signature authority. <clears throat> authority. Um, so it needs to be either a parent, a legal guardian, or uh, an agent acting with the pa uh, uh, power of attorney. So these are the three things. It can't be their friend Sam that, that uh, you know, lives down the street that opens it. Um, you know, again, if, if somebody is either a minor or uh, incompetent, they, they need to have somebody that, uh, that is established and somebody with a signature authority. So 
So one of the big drawbacks with, with ABLE um, uh, is that the state, the Medicaid, can come back uh, after the beneficiary uh, passes away and can come back and uh, uh, recoup the costs that have, that have been um, paid out for that, for that person. <clears throat> Basically, it's, it goes from the time that the account is established from then forward, it doesn't go from when the person was born or when they started um, uh, you know, receiving services from Medicaid. It's the time that the, the uh, ABLE account is established. And from then on, uh, uh, that is eligible for, for the Medicaid clawback. Um, so th this account really is not designed for a wealth transfer. or um, And we're, we'll talk about some other reasons why um, it's prohibitive on that. Um, it's really designed for, for people to live independently and for them to use and access um, uh, uh, the assets in, in that account. <clears throat> so ways to contribute. Um, the one limit is the $14,000 a year uh, total. Uh, collectively, that's how much people can put in. It can be friends, it can be family, it can be the beneficiary. Um, it can come from a trust, <clears throat> but collectively we can't put more than fourteen thousand. And this is a big distinction compared to what a, a five twenty nine college savings plan. In a five twenty nine college savings plan, you could have each of the grandparents contributing fourteen thousand uh, into that, and actually more. Um, but with an able account, collectively everybody can only put fourteen thousand in per year. The total amount in the state of Colorado, you can put in up to 400,000 of contributions. Um, that doesn't mean that when the account gets to 400,000 that you, you can't put any more in. Um, the account may grow to 400 or uh, uh, 500 or 600,000. Um, but in terms of contributions, you can only put 400,000 in. Uh, and again, that could grow to um, 800, 900,000 uh, over that time. Again, very flexible where it can come from. Um, it doesn't have to be the beneficiary. It doesn't just have to be the, the parent or guardian. Um, it, it can come from a lot of different places to, to fund it. <clears throat> so again, earlier we talked about as long as uh, it's in the account, uh, it grows tax deferred, and then you have tax-free access to it, as long as it goes to one of the qualified disability expenses. At this point, it's very, very broad um, where the money can be spent. It can be spent for education. It can be spent, uh, and this is a big distinction with uh, some of the special needs trusts. It can be spent for housing, for rent or for mortgage, um, uh, assistive technology, uh, basic living expenses, uh, funeral and burial, uh, those types of things. So it's very, very broad. Um, uh, pre prevention and wellness. You know, my understanding, uh, if somebody wants to go on vacation, they can pay for that. Uh, if they need a caretaker, they can also probably pay for that. If they want to take their whole family, they probably, that probably would not qualify as a, a qualified disability expense. Um, uh, the other thing, if they go out to eat, yes, uh, covering themselves, uh, that would probably qualify. If they took out their whole family or took out friends, uh, that would probably throw that into uh, an expense that would not qualify as a qualified disability expense. The other thing is, it's not something that you're submitting every month or every quarter or even annually. Uh, these expenses, you're going to want to keep, keep the receipts and keep track of. And if you would ever be audited by the IRS um, uh, for something suspicious, then you would have to produce that. But again, it's not something quarterly or monthly that you're going to you're going to need to show, hey, I spent X amount on, on this or that um, for the month. Um, uh, but it is something that you're going to want to keep track of uh, on your own. So some of the other things to keep a household up and running, mortgage, uh, property taxes, rent, you know, fuel, gas, electricity, all of those things um, can also be paid out of uh, uh, an ABLE account. You know, the other thing is just to kind of touch base on the rent or, or mortgage. Uh, that's the one expense that you have to pay in the same month that you take it out. 
or you want to have your ABLE account pay directly to the, the, um, either the, the rental uh, agreement or to, to the mortgage. The reason being, if I wanted to um, pay for rent and I pulled it out in September, uh, it went into my checking account, and then in October I paid for it, uh, you cannot carry that over to the month to month. Um, it would then be kept qualified as an asset, um, and uh, it also uh, would not qualify as um, uh, it, it could hinder your your uh, Medicaid or SSI uh, income. But as long as you pay for it the same month that you take it out, um, then it totally works, and uh, and you don't need to carry it over. The other thing is some of the other expenses aren't treated the same way. So if you were going to buy, if you needed assistive technology, you, you needed a wheelchair, you needed a, a, a speaking device, you, in those examples, you can pull that out the month prior and pay for it um, the next month. Uh, but for whatever reason, rent and, and mortgage is the one that you cannot carry, it o carry over. So that is something either you want to meet with somebody and talk about it further or uh, in terms of setting that up, uh, just in case you don't want to compromise uh, some of the benefits. <clears throat> so we talked about that the, f the federal benefits you do not lose. Um, if the ABLE account gets above 100000 or more, uh, the SSI does is suspended um, uh, in that example. If it would fall back below 100000 then uh, the SSI would then kick back in and you, you, they would receive the, the monthly benefits. So it wouldn't go away. It would just be suspended until it would fall below. And uh, the other thing is the Medicaid side, uh, those benefits do not go away, no matter what the value of the account um, grows to or the, the, the value of the account. So again, going back, that this isn't really a wealth transfer. This is really something that's designed for people to use and to improve their, their lifestyle um, so that they're not living in, in poverty and that they can have some, some independence um, around this. I, you know, one of the first people that called me was a, a young lady named Sarah. Um, and uh, she told me that she was development, de developmentally disabled and that she has always had a joint account with her parents. And her parents put money in and she could use that and access it. Um, and she said this is the first time that she's going to have, have an account that, that she can put money in and save for things that she's never been able to save for or, or use. And I, and I think that's where, where ABLE really can be a, a, a very powerful piece of creating independence uh, for, for people, whether they're, they're younger or adults, um, create an in, in independence that, that they can make choices for themselves and, and they're not strapped financially. Um, and prohibited in, in terms of the, the resources that, that they're allowed to have that's accessible. <clears throat> so there's, there's two ways that, that the ABLE account, the Colorado ABLE account, um, is going to be uh, used. <clears throat> we have one, saving for the future. So if you, ha you had a child that was, that was younger um, and they had a disability that, that um, you knew that they were eligible for ABLE, you can put money away and have it um, uh, in aggressive options, which are going to be a lot of equities, um, very little stocks, all the way down to a conservative option. And so it's going to be a mix of Vanguard funds. Um, there's, there's a couple of uh, uh, BlackRock iShares, um, and then there's one or two Schwab uh, uh, index funds as well. The cost on those is going to be 0.34 up to 0.38 in terms of the, the total amount of assets. Um, and these are going to be for things that you're saving for. If you needed assistive technology or you knew one day that your son or daughter was going to be um, living independently, but you wanted them to be able to supplement uh, some of those things, but you have a long time frame, you can invest in things um, where you know you're not going to use it on a day-to-day -day basis. The other option that I think a lot of people are going to use is going to be that checking slash debit option. And uh, that's what, you know, it comes with a debit card and uh, either families can put money in and, and uh, uh, the beneficiary can use it on a day-to-day -day basis. 
or they can put money, extra money that they that they want to save uh, for something. But th th they're probably using it more immediate. Um, uh, it's not something that you're going to get a, a very much of a return on. Uh, in fact, I think it's 0 0.01 is the per interest rate on that. Um, and this is something that uh, you know is very safe and it, that they can access. Um, you know the one the the one drawback I would say on on able uh, besides the the kind of the state clawback is um, you know there is the ability of people taking advantage of of folks um, uh, inadvertently or intentionally and I, and I think that's one thing with enable like we we can't protect people from that and so having good systems in place um, especially if somebody's not uh, mentally competent to, to manage it on their own, um, because it would be very easy for, uh, especially for a lot of people, that when I talk about uh, Sarah, you know, she shared with me that this was the first time that she was opening up a checking account um, in her life, and that she didn't, she didn't really understand investments, and she didn't really understand, um, uh, you know, money and budgeting and that sort of stuff. And so in that situation, it could be very easy for, for people um, you know, family members of, of taking advantage of that uh, that type of example. So we, we still need to be careful, um, uh, but it's a great option for, for, for a lot of folks. So the bank option goes through Fifth Thirds banking. Um, uh, it's $2 a month for that banking option, unless somebody signs up for the electronic bank statements or they have an average monthly balance of two, $250. In those two scenarios, the two, $2 a month is waived. Um, and uh, there's, other, there's other banking fees, like if they went out of network for the ATM or, or things like that, like the normal bank would have um, also apply. And, uh, and all of those things are, are written in the, in the terms and conditions on the, the coloradoable.org website. Um, the other thing is to establish an ABLE account, uh, it's $60 a year, uh, broken down quarterly, so that would be $15 a month uh, to, to have an ABLE account. If you do sign up for the electronic uh, bank statements, either on the investment side or with the bank, uh, it's discounted $3.75 per quarter, and it's $11.25 .11 a quarter um, to, to have that ABLE account. And then if you're on the investment side, um, uh, uh, again, the, the, asset manage, the asset fee is, is 0.34 to 0.38, depending on which option uh, is, is selected on that. <clears throat> so how do you sign up? How do you open up an ABLE account? Um, th very, three very simple steps. Uh, the first would be, I would encourage you to read the, the, the plan disclosure documents um, uh, just to be familiar of kind of the terms and conditions. Um, second, you would gather up information, social security, date of birth, permanent address, email address if you're going to get the electronic delivery, um, and then the checking or savings account that if you wanted to contribute uh, uh, electronically or uh, to that account that, that you're able to do that. Um, and then the third is, you know, going and enrolling at coloradoable.org. Um, this is what our website looks like. Um, it's fairly easy to use, uh, and you would click the, the enroll button, um, and it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to, to establish a, an account. Uh, uh, so it's a, a fairly easy process. We are also partnering, Colorado uh, Able is also partnering with the Colorado Fund for People with Disabilities. Uh, they will be on the, the, the website with their contact information. Um, and basically, they're there to help and assist uh, folks in terms of enrolling in the program or opening up an account if they need assistance on that. Uh, they also, pr uh, for a fee, provides other services like uh, being a fiduciary and, um, and that sort of stuff. They, they have other services that, that they're willing to, to provide. Um, and uh, they're going to be a great resource and partner for, for folks to answer questions and, and to help people through the, the process. <clears throat> um, this is my contact information. You are definitely welcome to uh, reach out if you have questions. If I can't answer it, I will try to find uh, you know, somebody that can. 
Uh, and as well, if you want me to present to uh, uh, community groups or, or nonprofits, I'm, I'm definitely uh, willing to, uh, to help and assist with that. Um, but I think in terms of the, the highlights are, um, one, going back that, again, I, I'm not sure it's a, maybe, I don't, I'm not sure that it's a wealth transfer. Um, just because it's limited in, you know, 14000 a year um, uh, in terms of the amount in there. Um, and as well with the, the Medicaid uh, clawback in terms of that they can access it after a beneficiary passes away, that this is really an account that, that people are going to be using and spending. And, and, and as long as it's for a qualified expense, there's a lot of really good benefits uh, uh, involved with that. Um, the other thing is... Um, you know, again, the, the disability needs to happen before age 26, the onset of that disability. Um, uh, I think that's another big thing. And then the other big thing is the federal benefits. Um, definitely SSI, uh, Medicaid do not go away, uh, as well as uh, food stamps and Section 8 housing. Um, uh, those as well are, are federal benefits that uh, enable should not affect your, your status on on, on those things as well. Um, is there any other? Can you go over the expenses, the 14,000? So if a person was to take out 7,000 that year for housing expenses, does that go back and forth or is it only, you can only contribute 14,000? Uh, so we, had a, we have a question about expenses and, ex and specifically about the housing issue. If you, um, 14,000, if you took 14,000 for the housing, um, you know, could you put additional money into the account? It, the contributions are set at four, 14, so it doesn't matter if you take them out right away. It doesn't mean that you can put that money back or put more money away. Uh, the contribution limit is the contribution limit. So unfortunately, that, that, uh, that's how, how that works. And how does the monitoring go, whether they qualify or not? Um, if whether they, how does the monitoring go if they qualify? Again, there's not a monthly, there's not a quarterly or even annual submission. Uh, somebody would have to keep track of their expenses. And if they would be audited, um, they would have to produce and show where they've, they've spent those, uh, those expenses. That may change. Um, at this point, uh, it's very new in ter terms of that. But at this point, from my understanding, that, that's... that's uh, that's the responsibility of the person using the account. Needs to... Still using that monitoring process. Who monitors the? Let's say that the account goes higher than a hundred thousand. Who monitors that SSI contribution? Yeah. So, I would assume that it's going to be um, the Social Security Administration. Uh, there. Right now, we're working in establishing the. Um, establishing those processes of, of giving them information on, on the accounts. And so my sense is that we would give them the, the information and then they would, they would flag it that, okay, this account is over, you know, X amount, over the 100,000 um, at this point. Um, so the, the, you know, again, I think ABLE, ABLE accounts are a great resource. And going back to the example of Sarah, you know, being so excited that this is the first time that she can open up an account for herself, um, you know, ABLE gives that opportunity to so many people that have not had that opportunity in a long time. So um, I really feel like that's, that's one of the big niches that, that ABLE, ABLE accounts are going to provide people that, you know, haven't had that opportunity before. And they can get excited and, li and have more independence from their, uh, uh, you know, from their family.